Hello everyone, this is Jordan, like the river. Welcome to my channel and we are going through the Bible. King James Version, for those interested in knowing, um, I explained in the first video why. So we are on chapter two. And there are two items from chapter two that I will talk about. One item will be resting. So important. And the second item will be marriage. Okay. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he restored on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rest from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now note, he said, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth. Generations. Okay. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up them a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And a man became a living soul. So God breathed his spirit into us. Remember that. <laughs> And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is, it which compasseth the whole land of Hivala, and where there is gold. Okay, that's a little hard in the King James. It's a little easier to read in other translations. Sorry about that. Okay. Then, uh, the, okay. And the gold of that land is good. There is bdellium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gahan. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it, so to steward the garden. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. So he made all this great creation. He took a rest. He blew life into the man. And then he said, well, it's not really good for a man to be alone. He made these rules for the man too, because he's a God of order. And the rules were very simple. You don't eat from this tree. Everything's good. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. For Adam there was not found a helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh inside thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Okay, so there is a lot of content in there. So let's go over first the Sabbath day. So God even rested. God created the Sabbath day for our good because there's such a thing called burnout. If we go every day and every day and we work and we work and we work and we work and we work, we weren't created for that. We were created to have at least one day a week of rest. So you need to designate your day for rest. And now as Christians, we usually choose, I like to do Saturday as the day of rest and Sunday as the day of worship, but not everyone has the luxury of having two days to do that. I just have a nine to five, five day a week work schedule. So it works for me because I have an office job, but not everybody has an office job. Not everybody can do that. So, okay. You should not be working seven days a week as a Christian. You should have six days you work, one day you rest. And that might seem crazy. You might seem like, oh, well, I'm struggling. I can't survive. Well, God is the El Shaddai. He's the mighty provider. He will provide for you, especially, especially if you keep his commandments. So just trust him. Take a day. Sleep. Praise him and take a rest. Rest yourself mentally if you're a mental worker like me. Or rest yourself physically if you're a physical worker like a carpenter or plumber or something in the trades. You know, there's different types of rest. Because I know if I don't rest mentally, like, after a while I get a little like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I break down. And then I know some people that do, like, labor. And if they don't rest their bodies at all, they get tired and worn down and sore. And they just keep going and keep going and keep going. And then they deteriorate and fall apart. So you got to rest your body. You got to rest your mind. You got to rest. You got to take a day for rest. Traditionally, that was Saturday. In the early church, it turned to Sunday. I don't care when you do it. I'm sure you could pray God, let God tell you that one. But you got to take a rest. You got to take it easy a little. <laughs> okay. The other item in here, which I think is super cool, is that God breathed into us. He breathed his spirit and gave us life. So when you think of the name of God, God in the Old Testament is Yahweh. That's actually a breathing exercise um, from what I've read. So you can breathe in the Yah and you breathe out the way. So and what I like about it is it's it's a reminder that God is with you. God has breathed into you. God lives, has wrote his law on your heart. Your spirit is connected to him. We are born again. We are dead to our flesh and born to his spirit. And we find our identity in Christ. And that's just a really great reminder that we would not be breathing if it was not for the fact that God breathed life into us, that he created us. So we remember him when we remember that we were created and it's just a beautiful thing so now i guess i'm going a little speedy on this one but eh, who cares it doesn't have to be long and intricate you get the idea like i said i'm not a pastor and um mine are for like people that want like a basic understanding so now we have he has all these animals and he presents the animal to Adam, and there's no one that's suitable for Adam as a helpmate. So he's like, oh, why don't I make somebody as a companion? So he takes Eve from Adam's rib and makes a woman, and he says, um, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So what that means is you have this traditional design of marriage. And this is before the pagan influence 
on the Israelites. This is before the influence on the world. You had one man and one woman who was made from him. Not multiple women, not multiple men, not a man and a man, not a woman and a woman. You have one man and one woman. Why? Why? To create that generation and that link and that lineage to be a helpmate. So she was designed to be a helpmate to the man because she was made from the man. And the man was designed to lead her. And they were meant together to steward the Garden of Eden. They were meant to cultivate this place that God gave to them. So now this is written after the fall. So it fleshes to our times. And it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So men, men, I understand that some men, especially nowadays, are afraid to grow up. They're afraid to take on the responsibility of a wife. They just want to play around. They don't want anything serious. But that's not how Christian men should be. It's just not. Christian men should be making Christian lineage. In order to make Christian lineage, you must leave your parents and cleave to your wife. And your wife should be a helpmate and help serve you and you should sacrifice for her like Christ did the church. And you two together will create a strong Christian union under God and raise children and your children will be first unsaved. And then you give those children to God and you pray and you pray and you do your best to raise them and you hope that they become saved. And, that, and then the cycle continues and the cycle continues. And that's really what it's supposed to be. And that was the original design. So that's for stewardship of the world. And that's really all I have to say about chapter two of Genesis. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more. I know some pastors that do like hour long videos on parts of this, but Mine are just little snippets. If you have anything you'd like to add, put it in the comments below. And I hope today that you accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into your heart and put him on the throne of your heart. And I hope that you really read through the Bible yourself and really think about the chapters. I know we're reading them together, so this is a great time to um, really think about it. And just think about what would you say about these chapters? What do you think? Feel free to tell me down below. God bless.